Welcome to What's Up in Jeju, where I visit places around the island and talk about what's happening with Hashtag Daily K's host, Peter Bint. Uh, we are going to be talking about Chuseok. Mm-hmm. That's right. So uh, you've talked about Chuseok and Chuseok cuisine in the, the previous segments. And so I thought, and I think a lot of us are thinking, especially me with my corner, uh, I thought to myself, so how different is Jeju Chuseok food compared to the mainland. How about you, Peter? Do you have any ideas? Well, it better be different. Otherwise, <laughs> this is a bit of a waste of time. Because <laughs> yeah, we I did know. do it with uh, Chef Ryan. Um, so I'm hoping very different as my answer. But to be honest, i never given it too much thought. But I wouldn't have thought it was too different. Maybe a bit more seafood, something like that. Well, that's the thing. It's like you wonder what makes Jeju Chuseok meal distinctly Jeju, right? Well, I found out that the answer is mm. both simple, but also not. Now, before we get into, the, into that, uh, I can at least share something that you can see for Jeju Chuseok that you may not see in other parts of Korea. Uh, well, not in this way, that is. Let's take a look at our first image. Uh -huh. Okay, here it looks like we've got a load of duck, the rice cakes, stacked on top of each other. And if you've got an uneducated eye, you might think that's white bread on the bottom, but mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's the form of dog as well. Yep, yep. That is duck go im or stacked rice gift cakes just as you said peter wow now in jeju stacked stacked right now in jeju during ancestral rites or holidays the rice cakes are arranged in a very specific order to represent the universe okay so if we're taking a look at the image the base is white yeah. rice cakes they symbolize the earth followed by that colored duck it's layers of buckwheat cakes that, those symbolize the fields and then cakes represent the sun Ooh. and the moon on top of them with a small cake on top to represent the stars you can even see they kind of have the little star shape there now the names and shapes oh, of these nice. rice cakes they can differ by region or family and the same cake may look different depending on the household now that is a trend that we're going to talk about later depending from household to household when it comes to jeju chuseok mm -hmm. food now, a key feature of Jeju rice cakes is the variety of ingredients. Since rice was scarce, and we've talked about this previously in other episodes, they often use substitutes like buckwheat, barley, millet, wheat, or sweet potatoes, which resulted in a wide range of flavors and more variety than other regions of Korea. And the person who made this is someone we featured before on What's Up in Jeju, Jeju traditional food preservationist and master chef, Mr. Yang Yong Jin. Now, we met him at the city five-day oh. market, and he honored JY and I, uh, uh, myself when she, he came and cooked at her house, if you remember. A gate crashed your house a little <laughs> bit, but that yeah. was much welcome for us as oh, yeah. well. So you had the chance to sit down with Master Chef Yang again. Yes, yes, yes. And if you remember last time, I mentioned he was in the process of opening his own restaurant that would serve proper Jeju cr traditional cuisine. Well, it's open now. His traditional restaurant, oh. Nangpun Papsang, in Jeju dialect, refers to traditional Jeju table setting, and it's located in Jeju Shi or Jeju City. Amazing, yeah, we don't have that on the mainland. And we talked about the skewer John, the Sanjok, mm -hmm. with Ryan on Tuesday. And that's usually one type per household here. And the only seafood you'll see on there is like the crab sticks. Yep. Um, and so that's not really high quality abalone or anything like that. I'm a little bit jealous. Um, lots of messages coming in and uh, many people surprised to see Master Chef Yang and then some of these foods as well. Um, and I got to say, yeah, me too. I did throw out maybe the seafood will be more plentiful there. But that level on skewers as well. And the reason I mentioned the sanjok that we talked about here, yeah, that's usually the one skewered thing we have. But he seemed to suggest that maybe skewers are quite a big thing down on Jeju, especially the seafood ones. Yeah, really. And it depends from household to household, right, uh, what is on your skewers, right? Some families will be more, uh, you know, pork heavy. Some will be more abalone heavy, maybe with the crab meat. Uh, if you're lucky, you go to a household that has some of the shark meat as well, which is uh, you know, a bit more uncommon. Wow, yeah, I've never seen shark meat just full stop up here on the mainland, let alone for like a traditional holiday food. So was there anything else that surprised you about the cuisine other than what we saw in that first part? Yes, so actually it was more an epiphany for me when it comes to Jeju traditional food. Now you see, a lot of people like myself... They kind of make the mistake between Jeju traditional food and Jeju folk food or folk cuisine. For example, black mm. pork, right? 
black um you know uh some gapsal or something like that or abalone yeah. or yeah. Hue, right Hue, raw fish they aren't traditional food by themselves that's folk cuisine using local jeju ingredients and a lot of folks they come down to jeju thinking they want to grab some traditional cuisine and so they get some black samgyeopsal on the grill or some hay and they call it a day and they actually some places even advertise that as traditional but for cuisine to be mm. truly traditional it's not just the food itself but how it's prepared that's what makes it traditional compared to it just being mm. folk yeah, I suppose if it's just an ingredient, mm -hmm. you could do that in a completely modern style as well. Mm -hmm. That's not the point, isn't it? So mm. so what's an example? Right. So simply put, you need somebody who knows, like Mr. Yang, how to prepare it in the traditional way. For example, black pig was only slaughtered for important occasions like feasts or funerals. It wasn't it wasn't uh, plenty. Right. So uh, to serve black pork as a commercial dish, it had to be presented in a banquet style. Now, let's take a look at our next photo to take a deeper dive into that. Okie dokie. Oh, okay. This is a very unfamiliar plate mm -hmm. to me. Number one, it just being a small silver plate yep. and then it having what looks like black pig on it there mm -hmm. with some tofu. And mm -hmm. then what is that? Sunde? Yep. So what you're looking at here is the traditional dish called gogiban. Now remember, it's not just the ingredients. It's how it's prepared. That's what makes it traditional. It's served on a stainless steel flat plate reflecting authentic jeju banquet style now in jeju every guest at an event receives this ex same exact dish three pieces of cold cut pork one piece of sundae or blood sausage and one piece of jeju dry tofu now understanding this tradi oh. tradition and preparing the dish in the traditional way using only local jeju ingredients that's the essential to preserving true jeju cuisine that's so interesting, yeah. And I think it's pronounced as well, kwegi, kwegi ban, right? Mm. And I think my mum used to say that a few times as an old-fashioned way of saying kogi, like yeah. meat. Um, but not in this way. That was so intriguing. Okay, so getting back to Jeju's Chusok cuisine, mm -hmm. it can be a blend of both things that you mentioned, folk and traditional methods. So Siska was asking, are we talking about shark fin? No, I don't believe so. When you're talking about shark meat, it's not just the fin you're talking about. I think in Jeju, you're consuming the whole thing, right? That's right. Uh, if you remember the image we just showed there of the pork skewer, it's big hunks mm -hmm. of char shark meat on the skewer itself. The first time I had it, uh, I ate it and my host was like, well, guess what kind of meat that is? And I was like, ah, some kind of porkish kind of thing. And she was like, that's shark meat. So oh, big chunks of shark. No what? shark fin soup here. It's it's the meat itself. They use the whole shark. Wait, so you didn't even know it was seafood? Yeah, yeah, right. It wasn't, it wasn't really fishy. It was quite oily. So that's why I was like, and it was white, actually. So I was like, this is kind yeah. of like a porky, but it's kind of falls apart. Not like pork, you know what I mean? So uh, the reason yeah. why I couldn't put my finger on it was because it was big chunks of shark meat. Um, so now we're meeting somebody else. You said mm. a she, and I see on the script it also mentions you went to a henya's home. So I'm assuming the henya was there as well. Mm -hmm. And this is a lady who can cook up a storm for Jeju Chusok as well. That's really the best way you could do it. The best way you could say it. So why don't we take a look at the final image of the day? So this is the table that was presented. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks really in a positive way, like home cooked. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's the thing. It's Jeju cuisine and, and Chuseok Jeju cuisine. It's I'm not saying it's not about presentation, but it's just about, okay, like it's all about the taste and what you have in front of you. And and that's how it is. That's how That's just how it is down here. And so in the middle here is the dried and salted yellow croaker type of fish, or jogi, chewy and savory, very buttery. Then there's seasoned veg veggies. Mm -hmm. They're all Jeju grown, hand picked right there. Ob absolutely, you got to have some jun on the left there. And then you have the juk or the skewer, all perfectly seasoned and cooked. And not only that, I brought something special with me today, and we talked about it a couple times. Uh, sorry, Peter, I couldn't send it up. Uh, there wasn't enough time, but you... I have the mm. chidim duck right here. Here's the star duck right here. Can you see? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it, it looks kind of circular. You couldn't. 
I'm I think sorry. you didn't. Yeah. You didn't oh, send geez. a tub. Yes. All right, so that is yeah. not what I expected. Now it's in your hand. Mm-hmm. Is it dry? Is it not all sticky? And- it is sticky. That's why I have mold tissue in, and I have to um, lick okay. my fingers. And, and I do have some mold tissue with me as well, but it is sticky. And right now I would probably put these Can on the fire. Give- mm. heat them oh, back before up. eating them. Yeah, pe- to heat them okay. back up a little bit. You wouldn't just have them like that. Yeah. Okie dokie. I mean, you could. So I'm re- could. really cute. Ke- Cu- curious about that chidum duck because mm-hmm. yeah i've never heard that name or seen something like that up here so it's rice cake with the sugar on the outside that's what been melted yes it's been melted and it car- caramelizes a little bit once you you cook it or fry it uh, but it's not too sweet and it's very chewy so it can be it depends on how you okay. want to cook it it can be a bit crunchy on the outside but still has a chewy center Oh, that's what I'm looking for, like mm-hmm. a creme brulee or yeah. something, like yeah. a little crisp exterior. That would be amazing. And yeah, in the photo that you showed us, mm-hmm. we talked about those fishes sometimes being on ancestral rights tables with Chef Ryan. The chogi is quite a pricey fish, to be honest. The salted yellow croaker, which has been dried as well, and then you kind of reheat it right. as well. And it uh, tastes absolutely delicious. And then, yeah, looking at some of the chon there, didn't look too unfair. Familiar, but the chalk, the skewers are what gets me again on that table. It seemed like you had mushrooms and all sorts of other things. So we're going to watch a video of you eating this and, and being at the house. Yes, so this is by the amazing Kim Chunuk, an 87 years young Henya from Jongdao Village <gasps> all the way on the east side. She's in fact a really close friend of JY and I and we visit her a few times a year around the holidays. So she prepares all this amazing food, 87 years young, for her own family. And then the day after Chuseok or a big holiday, she, sa- she calls JY up. She's like, hey. Hey, what are you doing? Like, come over. Come. So we drive all the way from Gosan all the way to the east side, uh, which we happily oblige. Wow. And she just dumps all the uh, leftovers, and we just eat as much as you can. And then, and then we we try to not take any home, but she just she's like take it all home, take it all. I know you guys don't cook at home, so she, <laughs> she gives it all Aww. to us. Yeah, that is a real big part of Chusok, just like with, I assume, Thanksgiving and definitely Christmas in the UK. You're eating leftovers for days after, and yeah, if someone comes round, you might have like a leftover turkey sandwich or something like that. Here in Korea, a lot of the ingredients can just be recooked in the same way again, although there is something called, I believe, a chon cook or jige mm-hmm. where you put in those savoury pancakes. I- I've never actually tried that myself. Uh, Master Chef Yang was saying you would go from house to house in the single day, and that was all possible because you're all together in the same village, and then you all get together to do these these uh, you know activities and games and, and group meals. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, these days, yeah, because we live in apartments mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and we don't yeah. get so much uh, yeah. time with even our neighbours. Mm-hmm. So I guess the closest might be the kids going down to the playground during Chuseok and just meeting other friends, but yeah. then they're just maybe playing on their smartphones or something <laughs> yeah. like that. It's yeah. not doing yeah. gangang sule or mm-hmm. anything, which is sad. you got to start I mean, that up, Peter. You go to some of the palaces. Yeah. Yep, okay, I will start <laughs> it as the half-British guy in the yeah. apartment yeah. complex <laughs> doing some traditional... Mm. Korean stuff. I don't even know how to do Kung Kung Su though. From what I've seen from like traditional paintings and stuff, it looks like you're in a big circle like yeah. Ring a Ring a Rosie or something like that. But have you, have you ever tried it, Mark? No, I haven't. Yeah, I think from the paintings I've seen, and there's a chain of restaurants, like meat restaurants by that name, mm-hmm. here up on the mainland, and they've always got yeah, just the paintings of the women doing yeah. that as well. Yeah. I don't know what the men would traditionally do. It wouldn't mm. traditionally be football like she was mentioning. Yeah. That must have been a more modern like introduction into it oh but yeah those chocks those skewers that's what i'm talking about i don't know if it's just my family's but the same with my wife's side the only skewers we had was the sanjok with yeah the the radish the yellow radish and some veg and some um, crab meat Mm -hmm. sticks and that was it yeah but there's such a variety there and just the amount the only like I can compare it to, I have some Russian friends and they have their own version of kebab where it's just the big hunks of meat on a metal skewer, right? It's not, they don't, they don't skimp out on the meat. I could kind of compare it to that just by the sheer amounts. I mean, you almost be full after a couple skewers, but if you go to uh, Chunok's house, she's not going to accept that, right? She wants a clear plate. So you need to go ahead and and get down and, and, you know, enjoy yourself. (laughs) Mm. 
all of that stuff, all the good stuff, the namu there as yeah. well, those panchans, mm-hmm. those like greens and roots and vegetables. Um, Siska saying, OMG, that's a table of happiness. Sherry saying, it sounds delish. Blazing Saddle saying, in Scandinavia, they've got the lowest rate of heart disease because they eat copious amounts of whale meat slash fish, hmm. which in most parts contains high levels of omega oils. I'm not sure oh, yeah. about shark and the benefits of that. I've never heard of that. Um, but yeah, being a, a type of fish or sea food it must be better for you than maybe land meats and things like that yeah especially uh synthetic oils or, or fats or saturated fats uh shark definitely has its own omega-3s as well so uh yeah lots lots yeah. of oil very oily so and i love that kind of stuff but you know it might be good to have maybe well you know maybe a little soju or or some cider on the side yeah. just to, just to, <laughs> just to dry things out you know what i mean that's it just for that purpose and none other than that not (laughs) to get tipsy or drunk on chusok at all uh mark thank you ever so much for today that was a real intriguing look at jeju chusok foods i wonder if we'll do the same over at solal if there's anything Mm. different but i guess it might be similar to the mainland where you get similar foods on both days maybe with one or two exceptions that's a really good point peter Let's find out, huh? All right. We'll keep you around till then at least. (laughs) Uh, We will be seeing you next Tuesday back to our regular scheduling. So have a good weekend, Mark. All right, brother. I'll see you then. What's Up in Jeju is supported by the JDC, which is creating a free international city that resembles nature, embraces the future, and reaches the world. I'm Mark Wilson-Che with writer Che Jung-Yun. This is Arirang Radio.